Hello everyone, let us continue the embryology with the second week of uh, development. So the main events which happens during the second week is the implantation. Usually implantation begins on 6th day of intrauterine life, 6th to 7th day and uh, implantation gets completed before 13th to 14th day of gestation. So implanted embryo becomes more deeply embedded in the endometrium and further the development of trophoblast uh, into placenta. So that's, that is the things. And then the development of bilaminar embryo, amniotic cavity and yolk sac happens during second week of development. So we see the development of uh, embryo, uh, embryoblast cells into bilaminar disc where they differentiate into two layers, epiblast and hypoblast layer. And we are even going to see the formation of amniotic cavity and yolk sac cavity. So let us begin with the implantation which is a critical event happening during the second week of uh, development. And uh, it is nothing but the embedding of the blastocyst uh, which we saw in the first week of development. So the blastocyst uh, which um, gets embedded within the wall of the uterus. So it takes place on 6th or 7th day of fertilization. So normally if we see the implantation, the upper segment and posterior wall of the uterus is the normal site of implantation. So if the implantation occurs elsewhere, then it is considered to be ectopic implantation. So implantation occurs at the end of the first week and the trophoblast cells invade the epithelium and underlying the endometrial stroma which I would show in the next image how they erode the endometrium and uh, this erosion occurs because of proteolytic enzymes. So implantation may also occur outside the uterus uh, such as in the recto uterine pouch. So here we can see the implantation in the recto uterine uh, pouch which is an ectopic implantation and abdominal imp implantation we can see somewhere in the abdominal cavity if the implantation occurs it is considered to be abdominal implantation and implantation in the ovary ovarian implantation and apart from the upper segment of the uterus the implantation can be cervical region which is called as placenta previa where uh, it uh, covers the internal os complete covering or partial covering of the internal os implantation can be in the fallopian tube or fimbriated end of the fallopian tube you can see isthmus implantation ampullary implantation and fimbrial implantation partial implantation in the upper segment fundus of the uterus it can occur so these are the kinds of ectopic implantation so implantation somewhere other than the upper portion of the uterus considered to be ectopic implantation and rupture can lead to life threatening hemorrhage. So here is the image where we can see the tubal pregnancy. So within the fallopian tube or OV duct we see the embryo starts developing. So we know the site of fertilization is the ampullary end of the uh, OV duct or fallopian tube. So instead of uh, transferring from the uh, OV that is the ampullary end of the OV duct into the uterine cavity. If the embryo settles within the uterine tube somewhere, so that leads to tubal pregnancy, which is a very common variety of ectopic implantation. Next uh, here we are seeing the implantation and placentation. So at the beginning of the second week, uh, the blastocyst is partially embedded in the endometrium. So here is the blastocyst where we can see it is almost forming bilaminar germ disc here which is embedded within the wall of the uterus. So this is the decidua basalis. Decidua basalis is the endometrial stroma where the implantation occurs. And we can see the uterine glands and blood vessels are present within the wall of the uterus. So these are the maternal blood vessels and we can see the Embryoblast differentiating into epi and hypoblast that I am going to discuss little later. Now you just see here this, this, this is the cytotrophoblast and this dotted one where the all the cells will coalesce they join 
and the nuclei will form a jelly like substance which is called as syncytial trophoblast. So, the trophoblast, the outer uh, uh, cells, the peripheral cells, we know it differentiates into tro trophoblast and the central cells in the blastocyst will differentiate into embryoblast. So, the outer peripheral cells trophoblast further differentiates into cytotrophoblast and syncytial trophoblast. So, this is the cyto, this light green one where we can see the cells, the other side syncytial. And we can see, appreciate one more thing, the syncytial trophoblast is more developed only on the one side of the embryo, where the other side there is no syncytial trophoblast, only cytotrophoblast is present. So, syncytial trophoblast is prominent at the site of implantation. It is at the site of implantation and it towards the embryoblast cells here. So, this is called as embryonic pole and the opposite end is the ab embryonic pole. So, now we know that it, trophoblast is differentiated into inner actively proliferating layer that is the cytotrophoblast layer and the outer layer is the syncytial trophoblast which uh, erodes the maternal tissues by day 9. So, this is the day 8. So, slowly by day 9 it starts eroding and develop into the syncytial trophoblast, lacunae develop. So, here we did not see the lacunae yet, but in the next image we would see the lacunae. So, the gap starts developing within the syncytial trophoblast which are considered to be lacunae. Lacunae means gaps. And these lacunae, uh, they subsequently dilate and become bigger and uh, which for, uh, gets blood from the maternal blood vessels. And uh, subsequently, the maternal sinusoids are eroded by the syncytial trophoblast and maternal blood enters the lacunar network. And by the end of the second week, uh, a primitive uteroplacental circulation begins. So, by the end of the second week, uh, the establishment of uteroplacental circulation initiates. And the cytotrophoblast meanwhile forms uh, cellular columns and penetrate uh, uh, surrounding the syncytium. These columns are considered to be primary uh, villi. They are called as primary chorionic villi. So, the, here is a cytotrophoblast. The cells will divide uh, into the substance of syncytium like columns which are called as primary chorionic villi. And within the syncytium, we see the gaps and uh, which are called lacunae and these are maternal blood vessels which get dilated to form maternal sinusoids and so blood, uh, this syncytium slowly starts eroding the wall of the maternal blood vessels and the maternal blood will pour into the uh, sinusoid that is lacunae. From the maternal sinusoids, the blood will pour into the lacunae establishing uteroplacental circulation. So, the inner cell mass or the embryoblast meanwhile we can see here it differentiates into epiblast and hypoblast. The blue color columnar cells what you can appreciate here these are epiblast cells and the yellow color cells which we see below it they are called as hypoblast cells. So, that is how the bilaminar now it is considered to be bilaminar germ disc. So, the epiblast and the hypoblast together forming bilaminar germ disc and epiblast cells give rise to amnioblast cells. We can see here this epiblast cells they are continuing again forming a layer below the cytotrophoblast cells which are called as amnioblastic cells. So, these amnioblastic or amniogenic cells they line the cavity you can see the small cavity starts developing here which is considered to be amniotic cavity. And superior to the epiblast cells, we can see the amniotic cavity develops. Then about the hypoblast cells, hypoblast uh, cells are continuous with the exosilomic membrane. So, here these are the hypoblast cells, they continue with the membrane here surrounding the cavity. This cavity would be the yolk sac cavity which is considered to be primitive yolk sac cavity. So, exosilomic membrane, uh, the hypoblast cells which are uh, continuous with the exosilomic membrane lines the primitive yolk sac cavity. So, this is the basic introduction about cell.
second week of development. So now we can see the implantation and placentation by day 9. So that's what I was saying in previous image itself I told the lacunae starts developing. So trophoblast further develops and invades the maternal tissues and uh, cytotrophoblast here you can see the cytotrophoblast they are dividing to form the columns here which forms the uh, primitive that is primary chorionic villi and the, these lacunae which are present in the syncytium they are called trophoblastic lacunae which later get filled with the mother's blood that is maternal blood. So maternal blood is here which are the enla enlarged blood vessels called as maternal sinusoids. And here we can see the hypoblast cells they line the yolk sac cavity along the exosilomic membrane which is primitive yolk sac cavity or exosilomic cavity. And these are epiblast cells and here we can see prominently amniotic cavity as well. So the trophoblast differentiates and invades the maternal tissues. Cytotrophoblast stem cell population we can see here dividing and syncytiotrophoblast which is invasive and fused uh, cells that is a syncytium derived from the cytotrophoblastic cells breaks the maternal capillaries and trophoblastic lacunae filled with the maternal blood and inner cell mass differentiates into epiblast and hypoblast and epiblast contributes the to the forming overlying amniotic cavity and uh, amnio, amniotic membrane whereas the hypoblast contributes to the forming the underlying yolk sac cavity. So here we can see uteroplacental circulation. This is a primitive uteroplacental circulation where we can see the maternal blood is poured into the sinusoids. So you can see the lacunae, it is poured into the lacunae and uh, this is the syncytium layer. And we can see slowly the cytotrophoblastic cells, they are growing. You can see the cytotrophoblastic cells, they are proliferating and trying to reach the uh, decidua by forming columns which are called uh, primary chorionic villi. And we can see the exosilomic cavity here which is primitive yolk sac cavity, amniotic cavity. And here at this stage, we can see the extra embryonic mesoderm, extra embryonic mesoderm. So that I would discuss in the next slide as well. So the by the end of the second week the extra embryonic mesoderm fills the space between the trophoblast and the amnion. So we can see the trophoblast and the amniotic membrane and also the exosilomic membrane. This is the exosilomic uh, cells which are derived from the hypoblast cells. So the exosilomic membrane, here is the amniotic membrane. Between that and the cytotrophoblast, we can see this caps forming and initially it forms a complete cells which are called as extra embryonic mesoderm. So this extra embryonic mesoderm later turns to extra embryonic coelom. How means we can see this lacunae, extra embryonic cavity lacunae. I hope you can appreciate. So these lacunae will join to form a complete cavity around the embryo that time. So that is called as extra embryonic cavity. So the extra embryonic mesoderm lining the cytotrophoblast and the amnion is called as extra embryonic somatic mesoderm. So we can see this is the cytotrophoblast and here is blue lining is the amnion and this is the extra coelomic membrane okay and now we can see uh, the lining the extra embryonic mesoderm the which lines the cytotrophoblast here peripherally that is called as extra embryonic somatic mesoderm it is called as extra embryonic uh, somatic so this is the extra embryonic somatic mesoderm which is along the cytotrophoblast and it is also along the amniotic cells. So the extra embryonic mesoderm which is along the cytotrophoblast and the amniotic cells considered to be extra embryonic somatic mesoderm. And there is a layer of mesoderm which is lining the yolk sac as well. 
this layer is considered to be extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm. So, it is the lining uh, surrounding the yolk sac which forms extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm. So, trophoblast further here we can see differentiates into cytotrophoblast which I already said and syncytial trophoblast invasive fused cells called as syncytium which is derived from the cytotrophoblast and we can see breaks the maternal capillaries and trophoblastic lacunae filled with the maternal blood and inner cell mass that is the embryoblast differentiates into epi and hypoblast cells and epiblast uh, contributes to the forming over, uh, overlying amniotic membrane and amniotic cavity and hypoblast contributes in the formation overlying the uh, yolk sac cavity. So now here is an image showing the implantation and placentation on the day 13 where we can see well developed uh, extra embryonic coelom or here we can see this is the extra embryonic cavity which is otherwise called as chorionic cavity and what I was saying previously the lining of extra embryonic mesoderm which is along with the cytotrophoblast cells this is called as extra embryonic somatopluric mesoderm which forms the chorionic plate later and the mesoderm extra embryonic mesoderm which is lining the yolk sac cavity is called as extra embryonic splanchnopluric mesoderm and part of the yolk sac it gets pinched off so we can see the size of the yolk sac reduces gradually and part of the yolk sac it gets pinched off which is called as exocelomic cyst which is a temporary structure and it gets degenerated and disappear fully and uh, reducing the size of the yolk sac. So this reduced size of the yolk sac is considered to be secondary yolk sac. So the second week of development is known as the week of twos where the trophoblast differentiate into two layers cytotrophoblast, syncytiotrophoblast and the embryoblast forms two layers epiblast and hypoblast. The extra embryonic mesoderm splits into two layers that is uh, extra embryonic somatic mesoderm and extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm and two cavities are formed. So one is amniotic cavity the other is the yolk sac cavity and there is one more cavity that is the chorionic cavity or extra embryonic cavity which is surrounding the complete developing embryoblast cells around the amniotic cavity and yolk sac cavity and we see the formation of secondary yolk sac where a part of the yolk sac get pinched off it gets separated from the uh, mother uh, developing and where we can see this cyst is called exocelomic cyst which is a temporary structure. So next uh, we shall see one by one again so formation of amniotic cavity and the embryonic cyst so as the implantation begins so I am just going behind again so here is the blastocyst where we can see the inner cell mass and the outer cell mass this cavity is called as blastocyst cavity or blastoceal and uh, where the peripheral cells the outer cell mass will form trophoblast which differentiates into cyto and syncytial trophoblast inner cell mass differentiates into uh, that is epiblast and hypoblast that we know already and as the implantation of the blastocyst progresses the changes appear in the inner cell mass embryoblast a cavity will form so we can see here the epiblast and hypoblast are there cytotrophoblast and syncytium starts eroding the wall of the uterus where the implantation is begin by 6th day of intrauterine life and com completes by 13th to 14th day of intrauterine life and where we can see the slowly the cavity starts uh, developing we can see the amniotic cavity here which is surrounded by the amniogenic cells or amnioblast cells which are derived from the epiblast cells. So, so the cavity that is the amniotic cavity uh, appears separating the embryoblast cells from trophoblast here is the cytotrophoblast so the epiblast cells get separated from the cytotrophoblast by means of amniotic cavity so the cavity gradually increases in size 
and filled with the amniotic fluid the inner cell mass becomes uh, flattened forming a circular bilaminar plate and where it is called as embryonic disc or bilaminar disc consisting of epiblast which are, which forms uh, which is considered to be primitive ectoderm and uh, it is a thick layer columnar cells and uh, made up of co high columnar cells and uh, related to the amniotic cavity and lies adjacent to the blastocyst cavity so this is the amniotic cavity and blastocyst cavity is no more called as blastocyst here it is called as primitive yolk sac cavity primitive yolk sac cavity we know how it turns to form secondary yolk sac cavity so here formation of extra embryonic mesoderm i am repeating again for more clarification so we know this is the cytotrophoblast cells and these are the amniogenic cells and yolk sac that is extra um, uh, extra embryonic mesoderm starts developing here so epiblast cells actually how this extra embryonic mesoderm develops the epiblast cells they will start proliferating if you see the development of uh, germ layers also the epiblast are the cells which give rise to all the three germ layers so these epiblast are highly pluripotent uh, stem cells which are rapidly dividing cells and uh, these cells are dividing and uh, they form a tissue here which is called as extra embryonic mesoderm this is the extra which separates the yolk sac uh, from the cytotrophoblast and we can see the lacunae starts developing the gaps starts developing inside the extra embryonic mesoderm slowly these gaps will fuse and dividing the extra embryonic mesoderm into so mass planknopluric and somatopluric so the blastocyst cavity becomes lined by exocelomic membrane which is called as yolk sac cavity we know that now which is called as exocelomic cavity as well so yolk sac cavity is called as exocelomic cavity the hypoblast cells soon replace the exocelomic membrane and the cavity is then named as primitive uh, yolk sac or primary yolk sac at this stage the embryonic disc the circular bilaminar disc the cells uh, between the amniotic cavity and the yolk sac cavity you can see the cells form a bilaminar disc between the amniotic cavity and yolk sac cavity and epiblast forms the floor of the amniotic cavity and hypoblast lies in the roof of the yolk sac cavity and uh, extra embryonic mesoderm which is derived from the epiblast uh, the endoderm of the yolk sac uh, gives rise to a layer of loose connective tissue so it is not only the epiblast cells to form the extra embryonic mesoderm some books say that the the cells surrounding the yolk sac this produces this loose connective tissue which is considered to be extra embryonic mesoderm and it uh, surrounds the amniotic and yolk sac cavity here it is shown little here we can see it is surrounding the amniotic cavity but it is largely around the yolk sac cavity so now extra embryonic coelom how it is formed so this you can see the gaps all the gaps will join to form this coelom which is called as extra embryonic coelom dividing extra embryonic mesoderm into splanchnopluric and somatopluric and extra embryonic coelom is otherwise called as chorionic cavity it forms the chorionic cavity and one end we won't see this chorionic cavity or extra embryonic coelom the where the amniogenic cells are there the cavity won't extend that area here i am saying this part the cavity won't go beyond this so there is no cavity here so the cytotrophoblast and extra embryonic mesoderm amniogenic cells are there here around the amniotic cavity this part later turns to form connecting stalk it will turn to form connecting stalk so we can see the uh, spaces rapidly fuse to form a large fluid filled c shaped cavity uh, which is called as extra embryonic coelom on the same time we can see the yolk sac getting pinched off 
turning to form a secondary yolk sac. So next about the connecting stock. So before moving on to connecting stock, I want to label this image. So this is decidua basalis, which is an endometrium where we can see the maternal blood vessels. These are the maternal blood vessels which are surrounded by syncytium. Syncytium is shown, shown in yellow color here. So these are maternal lacunae. The yellow one is the syncytium, syncytiotrophoblast which contain uh, lacunae of the fetus. This is the cellular component cytotrophoblast which is highly proliferating which divides and forms syncytium or syncytiotrophoblast. Then the extra embryonic mesoderm, we can see extra embryonic mesoderm which is along the cytotrophoblast is called as somatopluric extra embryonic mesoderm and which is along the yolk sac here. This part is the uh, somatopluric extra embryonic mesoderm. And we can see the amniotic cavity and these are the ep uh, epiblast cells. The blue color cells are the epiblast. The yellow ones are the hypoblast cells. So this is the yolk sac cavity. And the extra embryonic coelom is otherwise called as chorionic. So you can see the chorionic cavity. And you can see very beautifully in this image, the part of the yolk sac is pinched off forming exocelomic cyst. It is called exocelomic which is a temporary structure. It gets degenerated reducing the size of the yolk sac into a secondary yolk sac. And what about the connecting stock? The heading is the formation of connecting stock. So this point where the chorionic cavity is not extending here. This part will turn to form a connecting stock which develops a utero-placental circulation forming placenta. So the region where the no cavity has appeared forms the connecting stock and uh, that connects the amniotic uh, cavity and the yolk sac cavity, yolk sac. So you can see the amniotic and the yolk sac and uh, to the outer wall or uh, it, where it connects to the outer wall that is the cytotrophoblast it connects. And the site of the connecting stock determines the caudal pole of the embryo. So the appearance of the connecting stock we can tell which is the caudal pole of the embryo. So it determines the caudal pole of the embryo with the formation of extra embryonic coelom and the extra embryonic mesoderm which splits into two layers that is outer extra embryonic parietal or somatic mesoderm and inner extra embryonic visceral or splanchnic mesoderm which is along with the yolk sac and primary yolk sac decreases in size and becomes the secondary or definitive yolk sac and the wall of the yolk sac amnion and chorion are formed here. So amnion is made of two layers amnioblastic cells you can see the small blue color cells are the amnioblastic uh, cells and extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm. This is the extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm. The wall of the yolk sac is also made up of two layers endoderm and extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm. So this yellow color lining is the extra uh, this is the coelomic membrane which is endoderm which are derived from the hypoblast cells and this one is the extra embryonic splanchnic mesoderm which is surrounding the yolk sac and chorion chorion consists of three layers uh, that is extra embryonic somatic mesoderm so the chorion is from here to here so extra embryonic somatic mesoderm cytotrophoblast you can see the cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast so uh, these three layers and extra embryonic coelom is now called as chorionic cavity. So this uh, completes the second week of uh, de uh, development. I hope you understood this topic and uh, I have revised again so that you can remember 
so at the end of uh, second week we saw the bilaminar gem disc formation and we saw the connective connecting stalk formation and we saw the formation of secondary yolk sac where primary yolk sac turns to form secondary and we also knew the uh, chorionic cavity how it forms and how the extra embryonic mesoderm splits into two layers and how the utero-placental circulation will begin during second week of gestation. So, this completes the second week of embryology. Thank you.